Hello, I'm Richard Norman, the Field Services Training Leader for Monitoring and Diagnostics with GE Grid Solutions UK Limited. This how-to video I will cover the hardware installation and commissioning for GE's Hydran M2 and M2X single gas monitors. Let's take a look at the Hydran monitor hardware. After receiving your Hydran from GE, Unpack it all to confirm all contents have arrived undamaged. At the top of the box you will find the installation kit. Do not discard this kit, leave complete to assist with hardware installation. Let's see what's in here and what it should be used for. Firstly, this is the 1 16th of an inch hex key for tightening and loosening the sensor securing ring grub screw. Next to this is the 5 32nds of an inch hex key for loosening and tightening the sensor bleed screw. This is the 3 16 cushion grip hex tool for removing and tightening the screws that retain the hydrant outer cover. Here is a roll of PTFE or Teflon tape supplied to use on the sensor threads before screwing into the designated transformer flange plate. Next is a copy of Perception Desktop software. Customers are encouraged to install this to view their results, analyse their data and visualise diagnostics. Also included is a serial cable to locally communicate with the device for setup and configuration via the local RS-232 port. And lastly is a 1 inch C-spanner. This is used to tighten and remove the sensor securing ring which we will see later in the video. Now to remove the hydrant from its packing. Inside this box you will find the sensor parameter sheet. This is unique to each sensor and should be retained for future reference. Each hydran weighs approximately 10 kilograms. Care should be taken to fully remove it from the box. Securing the outer cover, the unit has four retaining screws that should be fastened to a recommended torque of 5.6 newton meters or 50 pounds per inch. At the rear of the unit is located the gas sensor. The unit is delivered with a transportation dust cover. Leave this in position until sensor installation. Securing the sensor into the base plate is the sensor securing ring, with the addition of a small grub screw to prevent the ring from loosening during operation. On the left and right hand sides are six conduit port blanking plugs. These can be removed to install cables and conduit to connect to the unit for online monitoring. On the unit base plate, you should find the system configuration label. This tells the customer if any additional inputs or outputs are included and the onboard communication type. On the base of the unit is the earthing bond point. All units must be earthed when installed onto the transformer. Now we remove the sensor from the unit. If necessary, use the provided one inch spanner to loosen the securing ring. With a little effort, it is now possible to remove the sensor, remembering to disconnect the internal cable when exposed. So let's take a closer look at the sensor and its component parts. Again, we can see the transportation cover. On site, leave this in place until installation of the sensor. Here are the sensor flaps to allow tightening and loosening of the sensor. This has a two inch across flat dimension. At the top, we have the bleed screw and bleed port. These are used to bleed the sensor of all air from the supply flange. Additionally, this can be used to take manual offline samples. On the largest circumference of the sensor is the ceiling ring. Visually inspect the O-ring to ensure it is in a serviceable condition, no cracks, splits or damage of any kind. On the front of the sensor is the electrical connection. This has a keyway to ensure correct alignment. On each sensor there is a serial number. This is important as it matches the sensor to the parameter sheet provided by GE. There is also the sensor air breathing port. This must be kept clear to enable correct sensor operation. On the circumference of the sensor body are profiled fins. These were from the legacy fitting procedure and no longer play an active role. Use the tool provided to remove the hydrant cover, retaining the screws for future use. 
now will identify some of the hardware features inside the cover. Here we have the expansion port. This is not currently utilised. Next to this, there are five relays. Relay 1 to 4 are customer configurable. Relay 5 is designated for the system service alarm. Above this is the inlet power fuse and the main input wiring connection. On the other side, there are four input and output slots available for customer configuration. Above these is the TDM and RS-485 connections for single or connecting multiple devices together. Here is an additional communication port for alternative carriers such as Ethernet or fibre optic. To the left of this is the RS-232 port for local connection and system setup with the operating software multi-host or via reception software. At the end of the unit is the HMI with a simple press button operation. Above this is the LCD screen for viewing changing information such as gas levels and trending. On the top cover of the Hydran internal body are some spring clips to assist with cover location and retention. Securing the sensor into the base plate is the sensor securing ring with the addition of a small grub screw to prevent this ring from loosening during system operation. The securing ring has a reduced section. This should be aligned with the sensor bleed and manual sampling hole when fully tightened. On this section it is reinforced to allow the C-spanner to safely tighten and loosen the securing ring as necessary. Now to prepare the sensor for installation. Remove the plastic cap and ensure the threads are clean and undamaged. Looking inside we can see the moisture sensor at the back and the opaque gas filter. Do not try to remove or damage these parts. Next, apply sealing tape onto the sensor threads. This is to prevent oil leakage between the sensor and supply flange. Apply the tape in the direction of the thread. On this sensor, it is clockwise, ensuring that no tape overlaps the first thread, therefore reducing the chance of tape getting into the sensor. Normally, three to five wraps is sufficient. Coverage of the whole thread is advised. To break, pull the tape and smooth down any loose ends. Again, confirm that the tape is wrapped sufficiently tight to see the profile of the threads and none is overhanging the first thread. On the identified flange with a suitable thread provided, make sure you locate the securing ring before sensor installation. Next, install the sensor by hand to reduce the chance of cross-threading. When hand tight, use a suitable fixed or adjustable wrench to fully tighten the sensor. Only use a wrench with smooth jaws to prevent sensor damage. Continue tightening and finish so that the bleed hole is at the top, i.e. the 12 o'clock position. Next to bleed the sensor. Whether installing with a heat fin adapter or not, the procedure is the same. During bleeding, ensure you fully open the supply flange to allow unimpeded thermal oil flow. When this is complete and air free, close the bleed screw and clean down the sensor and electrical connections. Next, to refit the unit to the sensor. With the electrical connection in hand, locate the keyway and twist to secure the connection. With the electrical connection secure, bring the unit in over the sensor as shown and guide it over the sensor until the O-ring is completely covered. It is recommended at this time to apply some anti-seize lubricant to the base plate threads to ease future maintenance if required. When locating the hydran body over the sensor, it is most often lined horizontally, therefore making it easier to read the LCD information. Whilst supporting the unit, 
Now tighten the sensor securing ring, again by hand first, and then by using the supply C-spanner on the area of reinforced material. When tightening is complete, ensure the securing ring reduced portion is aligned over the bleed screw and hole to allow for any future manual samples to be taken. After sufficient tightening of the securing ring, then tighten the grub screw to prevent the securing ring from loosening during operation. Now the unit is secured to the sensor, next we'll remove the outer cover using the supply tool to continue hardware installation. With the cover removed, it is now possible to fit any other external sensor wiring, cables and conduit. To fit conduit to the base plate, you must now remove a conduit port blanking plug. Prepare the conduit as per manufacturer's recommendations. Ensure a clean cut end, the sealing ring is in place and the correct size of conduit has been selected. With this type shown, when connecting the conduit end into the base plate, confirm the internal nut has the serrated profile on the base plate side. This is designed to grip the material for tightening purposes. After finger tightening, use the correct size wrench to fully tighten the union to slightly compress the o-ring to ensure a leak tight fit. When fitting the conduit to the base plate again, ensure the internal o-ring is present and fully tighten as per manufacturer's instructions. As seen here, it is good practice to secure any cabling to the internal body to prevent accidental disconnection. Alternative conduit connectors are available. It is the installer's responsibility to ensure they have the correct diameter for the base plate, therefore maintaining the IP56 product rating. After all cabling, conduit and relay wiring is installed, replace the hydrant cover. First install the rubber gasket using the lugs to align the gasket with the base plate holes. Then slide the cover over the main body. Before refitting the cover screws, ensure that the locking and flat washers are present. This should prevent the cover loosening during prolonged system operation. While supporting the cover, locate the four screws using the cross tightening method to secure the cover evenly without creating pinch points or gaps. Correct replacement of the cover is vital to ensure the IP rating is maintained. Thank you for watching this how-to video. Look forward to more M&D product content.